So I think I speak for pretty much everyone when I say I am more than ready to move on from this issue. I've spent pretty much the entire week arguing with people about this on Twitter. And I'm just, I'm done with it. But with that being said, I want to make one last video giving you my two cents about this whole situation involving Carlos Maza of Vox and Steven Crowder. And let's just, let's lay it all out because there's a lot of moving parts to this story and there's a lot of people with some really good takes and there's a lot of people with some really bad takes and I'm incredibly disappointed with some of the takes that I have seen from people who purport to be on the left, people who purport to be allies to members of the LGBTQ community. So to get you caught up, basically, Carlos Maza claimed that Steven Crowder for years now has been responding to all of the videos that he's producing for Vox by debunking them. Now, it's not just that he's debunking Carlos's videos that he deems bad, but he's also adding into these videos homophobic slurs. And when I say homophobic slurs, a lot of homophobic slurs. Before we get to the video, uh, with our favorite, favorite lispy sprite <laughs> from Vox. Nice. It's ridiculous. It's bonkers. You're being given a free pass as a crappy writer because you're gay. That center line on his little queer graph there. <laughs> what is, what is well, that Well, now line? the graph is queer? It's violence, filth. Okay, so the little queer can eat his chips all nonchalantly. It's code for rape, Mr. Queer eating <laughs> chips on the Vox channel. Mm -hmm, chip, 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 but you can eat just one, like dicks. Yeah. Now, Carlos has been made a target by Steven Crowder. Steven Crowder has been attacking him on the basis of his sexual orientation. It's incredibly bigoted. And Steven Crowder is unquestionably prejudiced. He doesn't like gay people. He's criticizing someone on the basis of his sexual orientation. And that is completely unacceptable. On top of that, he sells a shirt with a literal homophobic slur on it. And I know you're going to say... But Mike, it says socialism is for figs. I mean, really? Are we going to buy into that? <laughs> what do you think he wants you to imagine when he puts a picture of Che with, you know, a limp wrist and the A or I bleeped out? He wants you to think socialism is for fags. So it's a thinly veiled bigoted shirt and on top of that he advocates against lgbtq rights he makes fun of trans people he parodies trans people by dressing up as a trans person and pretending to be a trans person in order to convey an anti-trans message so this is an individual who's a bad person and as a direct result of his repeated harassment of carlos maza he made him a target and his viewers ended up harassing carlos and doxing carlos now, is that Steven Crowder's fault per se? No, I don't think it's his fault because I don't believe you really can control what your audience does. With that being said, as a very large YouTuber with what, more than 4 million subscribers? You have a responsibility. You have to understand that your actions sometimes have consequences. And you need to be able to realize that, hey, if I constantly target this gay dude and call, call him a lispy queer for years, maybe some of my more unhinged viewers will take action. And that's exactly what they did. So you need to be more responsible. And what Carlos did was he called for Steven Crowder to be deplatformed as a result because he contends that what Crowder is doing clearly violates YouTube's own terms of use. This is harassment. This is harmful. It's targeted towards someone because of their sexual orientation quite explicitly. So he called for Steven Crowder to be deplatformed. Now, personally, I don't know that I would agree with something like that because one, I don't know enough about Steven Crowder, so I don't know that that would be warranted. But I also don't necessarily agree with that because if you're approaching this issue, then you need to be able to realize the way that the right will respond. And it's always that they're going to play the victim. And that's exactly what Steven Crowder did. He made it about himself. He turned it into him being the victim. And he said, hey, Vox is trying to crush me, the little guy. And he literally even said this is... David versus Goliath. <laughs> <laughs> well, this isn't Vox trying to crush the little guy. This is Carlos, who happens to work for Vox, who's saying, can you maybe stop harassing me because I'm gay? I mean, would you say that Taco Bell is coming after you if the night manager was mean to you? 
Of course you wouldn't say that. So what he's trying to do is make this about, oh, this is the mainstream media trying to crush YouTube. Now, there's actually reason to believe that that is the case because we all know that the original adpocalypse happened when the Wall Street Journal, I believe, published an article saying, hey, Coca-Cola, your ads are being played before these racist videos. So we know that mainstream media is already out to get YouTube and independent content creators. So knowing that people would be sympathetic towards that message, that's exactly how Steven Crowder presented this situation. This is about Vox, a large corporation owned by NBC Universal, coming after me, the little guy. So understand the way he brilliantly, I think, flipped it. So the original person who's being targeted for harassment and doxxed is no longer the victim. All of a sudden, it's Steven Crowder who's the victim. He was punching down in the first place, but all of a sudden, Steven Crowder is the victim. Wow, right-wingers are so good at retaking the narrative. This is why they're so good at winning elections, because they monopolize discourse so quickly that the left doesn't even know how to respond. But with that being said, he's absolutely right to call out Steven Crowder's harassment, and I think that's some recourse needed to be taken. You, ha you, like, you have to be able to have some way to voice your grievances and expose people who are, who are harassing you. You can even agree that YouTube is a public utility and still understand that, you know, targeted harassment wouldn't fly. I believe in freedom of speech, but there are limits to free speech. You know, if we're in a public square, I can't constantly harass someone and call them gay and gay and gay. They're going to call the police on me, right? So, I mean, you have to have some type of way to punish people who are bad actors on the platform. So, Carlos, even though I don't necessarily know that deplatforming is the right answer here, he just was expressing, hey, help me out. And you don't have to agree with them. But what people have done is they've jumped so far to the opposite side to where they've essentially minimized the homophobia. And they're defending Crowder now to the detriment of Carlos and LGBTQ people. And the overall implication, the overall takeaway that I got is if I'm ever harassed or doxxed in the way that Carlos Mazza was, I need to shut the fuck up about it. Because... People aren't going to take my side if this could have broader implications if somebody gets punished for it. And you have to understand that this is a multifaceted issue, right? On one hand, we need to acknowledge that YouTube doesn't know how to handle these situations. And in the event Carlos calling out Steven Crowder leads to an adpocalypse, you can't blame Carlos Mazza for that personally. And this Tim Pool tweet basically highlights my exact fear as to what would happen. Send a special thank you to Vox and Carlos Maza. The purge has just begun and legit journalists are getting stripped. So it's not, hey, YouTube, maybe you should handle this better and not punish everyone else for what Steven Crowder did. It's this gay dude. He decided to speak up and thanks. Now we're all going to get demonetized. Okay, you need to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. If you disagree with Carlos Maza's call for deplatforming, you can disagree with him there. But to minimize the homophobia, to say you're responsible for this, I take issue with that. I absolutely take issue with that. And you could also blame uh, Crowder for this. And in fact, I put a lot of blame on him because understand this, as gigantic content creators on this platform, they should know that they make us all susceptible when they do things like this. Like Steven Crowder, he was selling this socialism is for fags shirt he produces content that is riddled with conspiracies, misinformation, and just bogus information. And he is openly bigoted against vulnerable and marginalized communities. So as a big creator, you should know that you're making us all susceptible because it's only a matter of time before an organization like the Wall Street Journal or the Washington Post who wants to take down YouTube uses you as an example I mean, look at what happened after the Logan Paul suicide forest situation because of the actions of one dipshit. How many people were demonetized after that? So Steven Crowder should know better that he's making us all susceptible here because YouTube doesn't know how to differentiate between hateful content and content that is not hateful. So if you want to blame anyone, don't blame the victim. Blame the asshole who is not the victim who started all of this. He's the one who harassed Carlos Maza. Carlos Maza didn't ask 
to be harassed by Steven Crowder for two years. Crowder did that. This is his fault. And also blame YouTube because they don't know what to do. But with that being said, with him being demonetized, is that the right answer? Of course it's the right answer. Of course. I'm not going to cry for that. Look at this tweet from David Dole. All of these videos from David Dole were demonetized. So I'm not going to cry for Steven Crowder because he was demonetized for spreading hatred and bigotry. That video that I did on Monday where I called out Steven Crowder's hatred and bigotry, that was demonetized immediately and confirmed by YouTube that that was not monetizable. So why should he be able to monetize bigotry, but those of us who try to monetize, you know, us pushing back against his bigotry, we get demonetized. Him getting demonetized is just leveling the playing field, in my opinion. I'm sorry, but that's what that is. Because if we have a disincentive to push back as creators against this type of hate speech, then he should have a disincentive to not post it in the first place. Now, with that being said, a lot of people don't get why you can do two things simultaneously. You can also be against deplatforming. I'm fine with you if, you if you take that position. I think Kyle Kalinske laid out his views really well on this. I don't agree with everything he said, but he didn't minimize the homophobia. But what people did is they tried to rationalize and justify Steven Crowder's homophobia because they don't necessarily agree with the premise that Carlos claimed, you know, we should be deplatforming people like Steven Crowder. And let me show you an example of what I mean by that. You're going to demonetize his entire channel, which I presume is what his livelihood is based on, because this whining adult, adult, not a child, an adult professional journalist who gets paid to make provocative political statements online. You're going to say, oh, you're, you, you poor little boy, we'll help you out and we'll get rid of this mean guy who's been so... Who's been, you know, like taunting you on the playground like we're in, we're in uh, you know, middle school. It's just pathetic. And it does get me a little riled up. Harassment is not... It, it is a, it, harassment is a malleable concept. Okay? This guy was claiming he's being harassed for being gay. Okay, maybe so. Maybe he's being mocked on the grounds of being gay. Get over it. I'm sorry. So that was an absolutely horrible take. It's not surprising because Michael Tracy is a bad take machine, but here is another very bad take. That's where it's like, okay, what is he doing? Is he mock? He's kind of mocking him, right? And he's mocking him by saying he's queer, but he says he's queer or he says he's gay. Yeah, but that's like saying, I mean, listen, just because the N word is in rap songs doesn't mean that uh, any that that it'd be fine to go and right. But the N word is not in like. It's not like the LBGTN, you know what I'm saying? It's not like a part of their, their organ. It's I, I think the principle, though, is you're suggesting that because a certain word is sometimes used self-referentially by members of a group, that any use of it from the outside is, b by definition, not problematic. And I'm just saying it's more complicated and you've got well, to look at the It's certainly more complicated. Yeah. You do and have to I look at specifics. I'm, go I'm going from memory, but wasn't Steven Crowder also wearing a shirt that said fags with the A with it an said asterisk? figs. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. It okay. said socialism is for figs. Okay. And it has While a, he's calling a gay the guy. A is a fig instead of uh, an I. As he's or, calling a gay guy a queer Mexican. Yeah. Yes. I have seen other takes where they said, you know, well, Carlos is a pussy. He just needs to grow a pair and stop being so sensitive. I mean, is it really that easy, though? Do you really think it's that easy? Because he got doxxed. So it's like you can't just turn off Twitter or turn off YouTube and then walk away. Like, it, he was text to his personal phone. So you, this bleeds into your real life. And the harassment from Steven Crowder became so prevalent that it started to bleed into Carlos Maza's personal life, which is why he felt compelled to take action. So if you're blaming Carlos here and saying he needs to get over it and saying that he's being too emotional here, I need you to understand you are minimizing homophobia. You're giving Steven Crowder a pass for being openly bigoted and you're essentially victim blaming. Again, if you disagree with him on deplatforming, Disagree with him on deplatforming. Disagree on that basis. But to try to minimalize the suffering and harassment of someone, that's fucked up. And if you did that, then I hope you really reflect on 
how this affects the LGBTQ community and not just Carlos Maza, how a young person will see the response. People need to realize, and it's difficult if you're not gay, but gay people, they are a target on YouTube. And it's not just gay people. It's especially trans people, trans people of color in particular. Um, it is minority people, women on YouTube. They are targeted. They're targeted. And some people, you know, I, I, I'm... I posed this hypothetical. I said, well, look, you're a fan of me. Maybe you don't like Carlos Maza, but what if this was happening to me? And the response that I saw was, yeah, but Mike, Carlos kind of asks for this. He makes himself a target because he has gay wonk in his name. He calls himself a queer. And, you know, he's just overly flamboyant. You, Mike, you don't get to deal with, you don't have to deal with that because, you know, you're, you're not talking about your sexuality every five minutes, right? You're not acting overly gay, you're not going out of your way to be effeminate. And I need you to realize that that is incredibly, incredibly harmful to members of the LGBTQ community. Incredibly harmful. What a lot of gay people do, uh, I'm assuming, I certainly uh, am this way as well, is we mute the most stereotypical aspects of our personalities while we're on camera in order to shield ourselves from criticism, in order to accommodate more heteronormative feelings of people, not necessarily heteronormative in the sense that most people are straight, heteronormative in the sense that if you break that social norm of not being straight and not acting straight and living up to what a man should be and acting masculine and expressing himself in a masculine way, you're going to be a target. You're going to be called a lispy queer. So for anyone to suggest that Carlos Maza is being, you know, a little baby about this, or that, you know, he's just, he's asking for it. He's making himself a target. Think about how you sound and how problematic that is. He's making himself a target. Oh, but he's acting gay, Mike. And you don't act that gay, so you're cool. You hide your gayness enough to where I don't feel inclined to make fun of you. So it's cool. But him, it's, it's a little bit too much. I mean, you need to realize that that's harmful. And the message that you are sending to people who are young and they see this, LGBTQ youth, it's really harmful. And they're especially vulnerable. Anyone who's gay can talk about, uh, certainly millennials, right? The newer generation, I hope that it's better for them. But when I was very young, whenever I would see this type of gay bashing and whatnot, and uh, people saying fag and using queer in a derogatory way, it really made me feel like I hated myself, right? And this was before I even came out, but certainly it made me repress those feelings even more. So you just have to understand that there's no such thing as someone who acts gay or acts straight. We are what we are. And another argument is, well, look, gay people, you know, they call themselves queers. So um, why does that matter? Well, I'll tell you why that matters, you know, and why it's different than when someone like Steven Crowder says it. So if a gay person or a straight ally says queer, and they're referring to us as a descriptor, I understand that there's no daggers in that word, right? There's no negative connotations. They're not using the word queer to belittle me. But Steven Crowder does not like gay people. He is pushing for our rights to be taken away and for us to not have further rights. He believes that a business owner who bakes cakes, for example, should be able to deny the same service to gays that he offers to straights. So he actually is bigoted. So when he uses the word queer, he's not saying it in a loving way. He's not saying it as a descriptor. He's saying it to basically say, fuck you. You're a queer. There's more negative connotations to it. And he says, oh, it's just playful ribbing. But it's not playful ribbing. There actually is reason to be offended by that because he actually doesn't like gay people and trans people like you've got to understand this type of shit it really does affect gay people and harm the community but after this week what i've seen because people are really worried about the prospect of demonetization or the creators that they love getting demonetized the sense that i got was oh just shut the fuck up carlos don't ruin it for all of us can we not disaggregate different areas of agreement and disagreement? Can you not be sympathetic towards Carlos being harassed for two years? We can do better. We can all do better. We can. We can do everything in our power to 
protect vulnerable communities from bigots like Steven Crowder. And when it comes to YouTube, again, I, I don't know what the right answer is. I think demonetization is certainly fine. I'm okay with that. I'm not going to shed a tear for him when leftist YouTubers are being demonetized all the time. He's not a victim. The oppressor is pretending to be the oppressed when that's not the case. So, I don't know what else to say about this. Let me go over my notes. Um, yeah, my thoughts are scattered on this because this is a really complex topic, but maybe, you know, um, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Um, I just thought that, you know, the left would be a little bit better at defending a gay person against a right-winger's homophobia. But many people shit the bed on this. And that's sad.